All right. Um, we're here in the Assembly Democratic Caucus uh, social media platforms with uh, the chair of the Democratic Caucus, uh, Assemblymember Mike Gibson from the LA area, as well as EJ, uh, the legislative director with Assemblymember Mike Gibson. We're really excited to have you guys here. We're going to be talking um, a bit about a bill that was recently signed by the governor, but a lot of work went into this. Um, it affects a lot of people, not just in California, but across the nation and other places. And um, we want to learn a little bit more about it. So um, I welcome you guys. Thanks for joining us today. Hi. Hi, Mr. Gibson. Hi. Hey, how are, you, how are you doing, Maria? Good to see you again. Good to see you too. Um, and this is a little bit of a different style of how we've done some of these live streams. So this is a very new, um, fun approach to hear a little bit more about this bill. Again, that has been signed, that is going to become law, but we want to hear about it. So Mr. Gibson, EJ, um, tell us, this bill was signed, but what does this bill mean to your constituents, sir? Well, this bill, Assembly uh, Bill 1621, um, had an urgency clause. And what that means is that it goes in effect immediately upon the governor, Gavin Newsom, signing the bill into law, which he did. He signed this bill on July the 1st, of two, um, excuse me, on, in the month of July of this year. And he signed this bill with a sense of urgency because we realize and recognize that these ghost guns um, are proliferating our community, not just California, but all over the United States of America. You hear um, mass shootings, you hear of shootings and they find um, a ghost gun. A ghost gun is a gun that is unserialized um, and is not recognized um, by Department of Justice in California. Law enforcement doesn't even know it exists. And so therefore, if we don't know it exists, then the person who um, has and creates these guns are doing to conceal his or her identity. So what it means for my community, you ask the question, it means one that we now have, watch this, we now have our policy that is, that is caught up to the technology um, in California. And so what I mean by that is because, because we have our technology that has exceeded our laws um, in our legislature. So now we have on, on an even on kill by which we can now ban, and that's what 1621 will do, ban of unserialized ghost guns um, in the state of California. So you ask the question, what does it mean, what this mean? It means saving people's lives. Ultimately, everything I've just articulated, it means saving an individual's life. It means a mother no longer has to bury her husband or a parent has to bury their son or daughter. Um, that's what it means um, from our lens. So we are now in front of the underground economy, the black market, those um, criminals who seek to um, hide their identity um, because we find that we can go after you. Wow. Um, and I like the point you just made. And uh, Edie, I'd love to hear from you on this, but you were just talking about how, you know, like our technology at times or technology at times is just ahead of a way of regulating, right? But you, with this innovative legislation, were able to catch up to this issue. And I'm sure there's still more to be done, but you're working on making sure that we're staying ahead of it as much as possible. Otherwise, constituents have this, you know, open opportunity of being affected by something that is. I mean, it's quite dark, right? It's a big issue. Not, not only dark, not only dark, Maria, but let me tell you how sinister it is. In Sacramento, in Sacramento, where a father and mother had a uh, custody battle, uh, the mother won by making sure that her three daughters, uh, father has supervised visitation. Supervised, meaning a social worker, will be and meet a father, this father somewhere with his three daughters um, um, where there's supervised visitation. Well, because of the divorce, because of the custody battle and the work the legislature has done around um, guns, when there's domestic violence um, and uh, there's a gun registered someone in the home, that gun is removed and confiscated by, by police or, or sheriffs. So what this father did, he was not a um, he was not authorized or lawfully uh, to have a gun. So what this father did is made an AR-15, a ghost gun, went to the location where the social workers was there with 
uh, his three daughters at a Sacramento church. He took out the gun, shot and killed his three daughters, his own flesh and blood, killed the social worker, and then turned the gun on himself. So when you talk about uh, ghost guns and us making sure that people like this gentleman, uh, this madman, um, doesn't have access to these kinds of things. And this happened prior to this bill going in effect. But hopefully we are now slowing down um, of, of incidents like this and other situations uh, like this where people can lose their lives due to ghost guns. Wow, that is sinister. Um, yeah, I, I don't even think I realized that that's how this had all unfolded. I remember hearing of this, of this specific issue. Um, thanks for sharing that, Mr. Gibson. And um, EJ, I, I'm sure there's a lot of nuisance, like little details that go into putting a bill like this together. Mm -hmm. um, and you had to work with entities, of course, you know, Mr. Gibson, you came up with this concept and you work with your constituents, but then is there anything that you'd say is like really a highlight in how the details, like how in depth some of the stuff happens in that bill, EJ, that um, you are uh, supporting, you know, Mr. Gibson, the authoring of this bill, um, remember something that's you know you're like yeah this happened absolutely no it, it is in depth and um i would say where it started from because i think it's a really important uh, point to make you know mr gibson even during you know our interim recess last year was calling me on a consistent basis a consistent basis letting me know ej someone else was shot and killed in our district we need to do something we need to put words together, solutions together, and we can't let it happen again. One is enough. So, you know, he, he connected with me and said, get with our partners. Let's think of solutions now. And let me give you one example that Mr. Gibson would, would consistently uh, mention that I think is important too, because it's real life. Um, the mention of a 17-year-old kid who was, you know, online, just trying to figure a way to, to get through the system and purchase one of these things. He was testing it out. And this 17 year old kid got a DIY do it yourself kit. He ordered it. And I think it was only $149, very inexpensive. Anybody could do this. And, you know, it, it came to his home in a few days. This kid went on YouTube, looked up how to make it, assembled it, essentially could have assembled it in under an hour and and that's alarming and that's happening with grown adults with intention and so that's what it really started from we got with our partners and we asked them look we, we need more solutions stronger solutions there's the federal government was going to uh, do an executive order um, you know they were going to make a decision at some particular point and it was responsible to align with that and and that's where it came from so some of the nuances of it yeah i mean we have a very important one which is alignment with the uh, federal firearms definition um that's key that's mr gibson emphasizing that we work very closely paying attention to that so then we have the full force of the federal government along with our bill um this bill also um treats uh well prohibited persons are added to the list so there, there was an actual loophole that Mr. Gibson closed in this bill. Um, so if you get caught with, you know, a, a, a set of parts and they don't have serial numbers on them, um, if you violate the law at all, you're now on a prohibited persons list too. That really was a point to folks who were manufacturing these things. So it's keeping folks from being able to manufacture them. Um, so those were some really big pieces of it, I would say. Yeah. Um, and then for folks that have them made already, that did so at a legal point, mm -hmm. they only have a certain amount of time um, if they didn't register all of them to register certain pieces on that. So it completely blows up the ability to really construct a ghost gun. And that's what Mr. Gibson was trying to do here. Thank you for sharing that, EJ. Um, and uh, Mr. Gibson, you know, like everyone has now a concept of what a ghost gun is, but for so long, like I remember reading the introduction of this bill and thinking, what, what is this? Right. And so you, you, you can't regulate something that people don't even realize that exists. 
you can't even, you know, get a hold of how it can be managed or how it can exist without breaking laws or hurting people inadvertently, right? But here is your bill that actually addresses that. You have constituents that are being heard by this issue. Um, but how, how can you tell us a little bit about how these ghost guns are being used? Um, you mentioned the black market, but there's so much beyond that, right? Right. These, these guns are, one, being used to take people's lives. I can't place it or put it any plainer than, um, than that. Um, the legal gun owners or people who have um, certain intentions, law-abiding as citizens, they'll wait, they'll wait a background check. If, they, if they're a gun enthusiast and they make a gun, they'll go and follow the law and get it serialized. Um, they will do that, right? But it's the ones who seek to uh, conceal their identity who will go and make a ghost gun. You can use a 3D printer or you can buy the parts and assemble it to get together. And as Mr. Guayo indicated, you can buy the kit and put board two holes in it. And from there, it's a fully functioning uh, we uh, um, a weapon of mass destruction. And that's how I coined it a weapon of mass destruction because it didn't, it's not, the, it's not to save lives, it is to take life. And let's be real clear, um, people who do this are doing it for one purpose and one purpose only and that is to rob and take life through this ghost gun. And so when you look at here in my district with the Los Angeles Police Department, uh, just in the year of 2020, and um, six months in the first year, they were able to get off, get and capture and seize over 1,600 ghost guns uh, in a six month period of time in 2020, when the, uh, the pandemic was at its height, right? And people were, uh, these guns were on the streets and people were um, buying them and purchasing them and making them and, and taking people's lives in the midst of this pandemic. And so what 1621 is a game changer. Again, I talked about our technology and now we have our laws that is consistent with the technology. Now it's gonna regulate uh, pe hopefully people's behavior by one, having 1621, this ghost gun piece of legislation in law. And so for me, just um, on the Congress designated um, in 2007, September the 25th, as Victims of, of, of Murder uh, 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 Month. And so I was with Just for Murder Children um, in Wilmington um, on the weekend on Saturday, and they had a number of shoes lined up where people used to walk in these shoes. And then all around the park, there were pictures and images of people who used to live in, our, in, in, this, in California but who lost their lives due to 99% uh, of the people who, uh, pictures up there, uh, were people who lost their, their loved ones due to gun violence. Whether it's a ghost gun or a legal gun or a stolen gun, they died at the hands of someone using a gun. And so uh, we want to decrease, we don't want to add another picture to this growing memorial uh, makeshift wall we want to make sure uh, that it's safe to walk down the streets. We want to make sure that it's just not communities of color uh, that uh, uh, are, are, are safe. We want to make sure every community in California is in fact safe and um, away from uh, uh, gun violence. That's why Moms Demand Action, who's been partnering with me, every town, um, um, the Brady Campaign, um, Gifford Law Center, um, um, students against guns, and the list goes on and on. We don't want to, we want to make sure that our churches are safe. We want to make sure our nightclubs and, um, you know, our place of worship, uh, our malls are safe um, from uh, these acts of violence that uh, we see in our country um, today. Thank you for that. And then, so a follow-up question to all of this, how soon do we see this, this law take action? Has it been immediate? Do we see it January 1st? What are your expectations now? No, that is the reason why we have an urgency, had an urgency clause in 1621. Um, and I want to underscore this bill on this gun bill <laughs> has received bipartisan support, uh, bicameral support, 
in both houses. So I'm grateful to say that is received uh, bipartisan support from Democrats and Republicans. Uh, but the Democrats showed up in a very strong way uh, when this bill hit the floor. And this bill was signed, it was one of my first piece of legislation this year signed. Um, and it was signed in July, which means that it had an urgency clause and it goes in effect immediately upon uh, Governor Gavin Newsom's signature. And I wanna thank the governor because without him, we would not have this bill um, um, as part of the, the, the law in the state of California. And we know that other states are looking at what California does and California continually leads the way. I happen to know that there's other states that's looking um, at this piece of legislation and we welcome the opportunity. That's why it was so important to the gut that our president, Joe Biden signed into law on my birthday, uh, June 25th, 2022, the executive order that was uh, bipartisan support that received you know, bipartisan support, uh, which was um, um, attacking and addressing um, ghost guns in the United States of America. We need federal legislation, and I'm glad the leadership was there to do it. And so, you know, some of the solutions that already this bill has, you know, back to your point, it was immediate action, right? Like it already is in place in California and other places will soon be there too. But some of those solutions is like, you know, being able to trace and track who is trying to purchase guns, weapons in any way. It's super important. And in California, that's something that you've been working towards for a long time. You've worked on a lot of pieces of legislation to just see how, you know, access or not access or in California in general, like we have some um, laws that are very important for these issues, right? Um, but then being able to track these weapons, if they are being built in, I don't know, from a 3D printer, you, which is, I believe, some of the ways that some folks are putting these together, it's huge. Like, otherwise, how do you know if it goes into the wrong hands? And so this, this law really does come into action for one of those areas, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. Again, because of technology, we need to make sure that our laws are not old and antiquated, that we that it speaks to the times we're living in right now. And again, this is a sensible um, yeah. gun safety uh, piece of legislation. It is sensible um, and reasonable that we do this because of what's taking place um, in California, but across this nation. And so I was happy to do it. I will still be in this land, still working to do everything that I can uh, to, to ensure uh, that uh, the NRA uh, voice is not the loudest in the room, that we will not and refuse to retreat, to back up, to lay down, to surrender. We're moving forward because we know that lives are being saved. People ask the question, how do you know that all the bills that are, are saved, isn't it enough bills already on the books? Um, uh, are we really saving lives? Yes, because if these laws were not on the books, there'll be more people that will have lost their lives due to gun violence. But it's because of the thoughtfulness of the pieces of legislation that myself and my colleagues um, have created and the governor uh, Brown and also Gavin, Governor Newsom have signed into law is, a, is the reason why we don't have more guns and more gun violence on, um, on our streets um, in the state of California. Well, Mr. Gibson, uh, that is um, pretty incredible. I'm uh, so happy to have learned so much from you just on this issue. Um, I don't know if there's anything else that you'd like to share about how this bill will impact constituents. EJ, I open the floor to you too. Um, I'm looking forward to more on this issue, of course, but like this is a giant leap towards actually, you know, making sure that this doesn't continue being a problem. Right, and again, I think that every day we can turn on the news and not hear uh, that someone have lost their lives due to uh, a ghost gun um, and, and turn on the news that uh, within a day that someone has not lost their lives due to gun violence is a victory for all of us, right? But again, I think the work is, the, the battle is far from over. I think we still have to continue to lean in and work extremely hard and come up with very thoughtful because the gun is enthusiasts, the people who are members of the NRA think that we have too many guns, uh, too many gun laws. And it's about the second amendment. It's about taking their right to bear arms and things of that nature. And it's far from it because if you are a law abiding citizen, you will have no problem with abiding by the laws. So I don't buy that for one moment. 
I don't. And I know that people will say, well, it's not guns that kill people. It's people who use the guns to kill people. Right. But it's the people who that we need to uh, restrict their ability, their ability to have access to these guns. And those who do have access to the guns should be law abiding uh, citizens um, um, that are, are doing things the right way and not the things that uh, try to conceal their identity um, so they can go out and take someone's life. That's not the America. That's not the California. And we're going to continue to uh, fight to making sure that this is a, the safest uh, state um, in the union. Thank you for that. Yeah. EJ, anything else from you? Yeah, I would just add to that. Well said. Um, I would send, say this, this sends a clear message. Um, it sends a clear message. Um, you know, enough is enough to all the bad actors who took lives, took a life, even one. Um, Californians, our communities, uh, our families, our friends, those who they represent, like Mr. Gibson, we're tired of it. We're tired of it. And this is a solution to, to get to a place that folks don't have to bury another child or another family member. So I think that means a lot. So the message is clear. Well, and, and we're not giving up. We're going to continue to fight um, because uh, we cannot um, we cannot surrender to uh, individuals who uh, all they want to do is take people's lives. We're not going to do that. We want to make sure that, again, that our schools are safe. And I'll end on this note, that our churches, our places of worships are safe, our supermarkets. Uh, we want to make sure that uh, Duval, uh, Texas, doesn't happen in California. We want to make sure that a Pulse nightclub doesn't happen um, in, you know, in California and the list just goes on and on. We wanna make sure that a father who's faced with a uh, supervised visitation doesn't take to um, creating a gun and taking um, his children's lives as well as the supervisor's life as well as his her, or her, her own life. Uh, we wanna make sure uh, that, that, that those stories are behind us and not in front of us. Thank you so much, sir, for spending this time sharing with us the importance of this bill passing and, and, and how it really is going to make some changes in our state. And thanks for championing this bill. Um, and I, I just want to say one thing. If yes. you, those of you who are listening, those of you who are viewing, uh, I just, you know, um, you know, encourage you to get in contact with my office, uh, either my Sacramento, my district office, uh, my district office is area code 310-324-6408. Um, and my capital office is 916-319-2064. Uh, reach me through my website, uh, my email uh, address. I wanna hear from you. I wanna hear from you directly in terms of your ideals on how we can make California the safest uh, state in the union, uh, especially as it relates to guns. Um, in our community. I want to hear your stories personally of, of a loved one who may have lost their life um, due to gun violence and how we refuse to be silent because silence is a form of betrayal and we refuse to be found guilty of being silent. So I want to hear from you. I would love for you to correspond with me and my office on this matter and others. So please, uh, I challenge you to do so and be a change agent, be the change you want to see. Thank yeah. you. Thank you, sir. Thank you so, so much for spending this time again, both of you. Um, we will make sure to share that contact information as this is posted through uh, the platforms. And yeah, this is the perfect timing. We hope um, also to see more of this very soon. We know that having you in the assembly, this will continue and be something that uh, you're fo focused and working on, sir. So thank you for that. Uh, for those of you that were tuning in, thanks for joining us. We look forward to the next conversation. And uh, send us your ideas too and suggestions. Thank you, EJ. Thank you, Mr. Gibson, again. And bye to the rest of the crew that helped us make this happen. Have a great rest of your afternoon. Take care. It's been a pleasure.